Hello, everyone. Welcome to Acumen's Webinar Wednesday. My name is Stephen Phelps, and I'm the Marketing Manager here at Acumen. And today we invited Nick from InfoPOS to showcase his omni-channel solution and show you how you can create value for your Stage 300 at the point of sale. Uh, InfoPOS is known as a world-class point of sale solution that is easy to use and helps extend the core features of your Stage 300. In this webinar, Nick will go over the benefits of Omnichannel, how InfoPOS fits into your system, and then drive deeper with a product demo. Uh, please note before we begin that this webinar is in listen-only mode and should last around one hour long. If you have any questions, then please feel free to type them into the chat option and we will answer them near the end of the presentation. Uh, with that said, I will now pass it on to Nick to get started. Thank you very much, Stephen. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning. My name is Nick. Um, I work with InfoPos, and I've been with InfoPos for five years now. So I'm based in Vancouver in Canada, and it's my pleasure to join the Acumen team today. So just firstly, we've run through somewhat of an agenda with Stephen, where I'm just going to introduce myself at InfoPos and what we do. We're just going to run through what is Omnichannel and as well as the benefits of Omnichannel. And there are some um, really clear benefits for you know, treating your customers and giving them the best uh, experience point possible, uh, as well as how InfoPos can deliver this Omnichannel experience and how InfoPos fits into your system, because we do treat Sage as our point of truth and the, uh, the be all for, for us as well as what InfoPos looks like, where we'll run through a quick demo where we can see some of our core functions as well as some extended functionality and a quick Q&A at the end. Just quickly, a little bit about InfoPos. So we're a software company with over 30 years of industry experience uh, and we are internally developed. So we do um, run our in development internally. Um, we've got offices across the world in Vancouver in Canada, which is our head office as well as in Brisbane, Australia, uh, Johannesburg, as well as in Europe. We do always bring our retail expertise to the table. So myself, I spent some time in the retail sector, uh, got me through high school and university. And then since then I actually worked as a uh, Sage 300 user, uh, which got my introduction to the industry and found my way joining with InfoPos. So I actually worked for a, a clothing wholesaler. So I worked with a warehouse management solution as well as um, Sage 300 um, receiving orders over an e-commerce solution. We also bring our retail focused support. So our, all of our support team have experience with retail and we do understand the needs of that sort of environment, including we do also include 24 seven support with all packages. We currently have thousands of locations using our software and, as I mentioned earlier, across Australasia, as well as Africa, the Caribbean, the UK and North America. Just briefly, a little bit about Omnichannel. So Omnichannel um, really describes the experience that your customer is looking to receive and that the universal experience. So multi-channel is where your customer can be communicated with, whether it's e-commerce, point of sale or over the phone, like you know, there's many different channels that you can use to communicate with your customer. Whereas Omnichannel, we're really trying to get that um, communication universal. So there's communications between the different solutions and it's, um, as we build that into our Sage environment, we can start to see how that applies. So we see the customer as the centerpiece of that. And we're looking at you know, functions such as in-store pickup, in-store purchases, or home delivery, mobile purchase, or online purchase. And really this is becoming more and more prevalent in today's world with you know, the growth of COVID and everyone in lockdowns you know, now and then. We've seen you know, New Zealand going into lockdown recently. We've seen both US and Canada. And we see uh, how much people have gotten used to using um, you know, e-commerce for that, as well as visiting the store. So um, they 
people are learning and look, looking for that universal experience. Some of the benefits of Omnichannel for you, where we look at 69% of customers prefer an in-store shopping experience. And so that's really saying something where we still look at, and this is a stat from this year, where we see most people, uh, although there is a growth of online shopping, where 56% of customers, customers shop online at least once a month, people still prefer that in-store shopping experience. And if you've got an omni-channel customer, their lifetime value is in general up to 30% higher if they compared to a single channel customer. And that really adds a lot of value to, to your solution. So even if your customers aren't coming in as frequently, when you look at something like an Amazon, you may order things online. However, you still do want to see those products in person. And so you're having that experience both in person and online, you can like mesh all of those together. 50% of shoppers expect that they will be able to make a purchase online and pick it up in store. And that's a really big statistic where we look at, you know, the kind of people that we're seeing, but whether it is, you know, buying shoes online. So myself, I bought some runners the other day and I wanted to go pick that up, pick them up somewhere to have a look at them before I actually purchased them, but that wasn't actually available to me. So the supplier in question let me down in that instance. And 33, only 33% 33 of customers remain loyal to companies with a weak omnichannel approach. When you look at things such as, you know, loyalty programs or past purchases, things like that that make it convenient for the customer, it's really difficult to retain that loyalty when you've just got that single approach or you don't have that universal approach. Whereas 89% of customers remain loyal to companies with a strong omnichannel approach. Whether, whether it is that I want to come in store to buy something, whether I want to make that purchase online, whether I want to order it over the phone, no matter how that, how that occurs, I want to see the same items, the same prices, and I want to see my history. And so when we start to introduce Sage to that, we see Sage as the center of that universe where we see all those core services, the ERP, accounting, CRM, and then you add in like any warehousing and inventory information, all of that is being kept in that center, centerpiece of Sage as a core. And then all the outside um, pieces all fit together with Sage as the center of that. So we're, today we're looking at the point of sale side, and then you all also have the e-commerce and also phone, social, and mobile. No matter how the customer is going to communicate with you, they're always using that core information from Sage. Let's briefly, we're looking at Infopos and how we fit into that system. So Infopos, we see Sage, that centerpiece again, and then Infopos sets up here. Where we have our point of sale terminals, whether that is one location or a hundred, they're all having that universal experience from the customer. And then whether it is web orders, phone orders, or EDI, all of that's coming through Sage. And so Sage acts as that filter point where we're honoring all of your configuration there. And just briefly about how our system architecture fits together, where we see Sage as the top of our pyramid, we see the InfoPos back office, which gives us that single point of contact with Sage. So we're not going to use up 100 licenses for 100 locations. We're just using one license. And then your InfoPos point of sale locations, all distributed below that level. I'm going to quickly run you through some of our goals we have for retailers because we're at the, in essence, we're trying to give you better tools to help you manage your business. So we're trying to do more with less by automating and streamlining as many of those processes as possible. So that is uh, you're completing one set of tasks in Sage and then by automating and streamlining that, all of that is flowing down to the point of sale. And then vice versa, you're completing that single um, single task at the point of sale and expecting those transactions to make their way to Sage. 
Again, we're trying to reduce any manual effort associated with that and any task duplication because you don't want to set up pricing in multiple systems and have to make sure that they all match. You just want to set it in one place and have that distribute through all of your um, points of contact with your customer. And through that, we're trying to give you a point of sale that's going to assist that sales process and not hinder it. So we're trying to make it as easy as po possible. So you want to ensure that your account customers get their price list that they've negotiated with you. You want to ensure that your loyalty customers get their loyalty points or get their you know, due rewards. And they're not going to um, miss out on the rewards or they're not going to have a bad experience. And as well as before being in, within the SAGE industry, we're also increasing those controls and reporting for management. So from a controls perspective, whether you want a supervisor to access to override a certain function, so you, for a return or a credit note, for example, you might want a supervisor to authorize that. We can institute controls such as that. And from a reporting perspective, we also give that next level of de depth from what is available in order entry. And we are looking to future proof. So set, we all know Sage grows and improves every year and so does InfoBoz. So we're always working on our new system and we'll have our 2022 release um, being announced in the coming weeks. I'm going to run through some of the verticals that we sort of expect and the sort of functionality that we have to support those verticals. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't mix and match across those, but it just shows the sort of flexibility that our system can provide. So we're looking at you know, basic retail, we can obviously support that. And we're looking at restaurants and hospitality. And restaurants or hospitality have some really unique challenges where we look at things such as table service, tips, and even like printing orders to the kitchen or the barista or the, the bar to make a cocktail. All of that functionality is supported within InfoPos. And so it really has that flexibility uh, in, within the system. Uh, fashion and jewelry. So a lot of... Um, Fashion retailers really expect to be able to view their stock in a grid to, so they can see across one style all the sizes they have available or all the colors they have available. And that's really um, important and that is a function that we support. And you can even complete purchase order receipts for those goods as they recite, receive in store. And then home and giftware. So we're starting to look at those really core retail functions like gift cards and loyalty point systems. So we have our own enterprise level uh, gift card and loyalty point system where you can issue a gift card and top it up multiple times. And loyalty points, you can change, have different levels of loyalty points. So you might have a gold level where you receive two points per dollar spent, then you might have a silver level where you only receive uh, one point per dollar spent. So you can uh, do have some flexibility within that, as well as promotions and specials within that function. So for a particular week, you might say all of my um, pillows or cushions may receive a uh, four points per dollar spent for a particular time period. You can have that flexibility of that system. We start to look at electronics and lighting. Some of the functions that is really needed there is lot tracking and serialization, which we support. So obviously Sage 300 supports it and so do we. And we do have the flexibility in whether that serial number needs to be entered at the point of sale or we're honoring these serial numbers already set up in Sage. And even mobile vans. So we're looking at re remote locations with poor connectivity or ones that go offline for periods of time. All of that functionality is supported offline except for our live customer balances and live inventory balances. Other than that, all the other functionality is still honored. 
And it's particularly relevant in the US and Canada where we have lots of complex taxes. So things such as bottle deposits or particular alcohol um, taxes, we can charge that sort of thing and really honor that from Sage, as well as any promotions where you might have um, need to buy, buy quantity breaks, such as you know, buy a dozen bottles of wine and get a discount. And then for white goods and furniture, we really promote our um, quote sales order and deliveries function. So for quotes, it's really relevant in a lot of different industries where you're looking to issue a quote and then create a sales order from that quote with those specific prices and then even complete a delivery uh, for those goods once they come in. We can print off those delivery run sheets and even calculate the freight that should be charged for that. All right, now let's explore. So when we look at our point of sale, we can see our point of sale here. Now, on the left-hand side of the screen, we can see a big InfoPos logo. It's really easy to customize with your customer's logo and or your, your logo. And when you see that, it actually functions as a start sale button. So it's really easy to use if you've got a touch screen, and down the bottom of the screen, we can see we have what we call our static keys. So these are always the same and just um, change functions, whether we are in a sale or not within a sale. So for example, our tenders button or payments button is currently grayed out because we're not within a transaction, so we can't accept money. Then we can look up our items, issue a gift voucher, look up our customers, so our item master and customer master are both coming down from Sage. We do offer layaways or lay buys and have an on-screen keyboard if we do have a touch screen enabled terminal without a keyboard attached to it. And within our more options menu, we do see our extra functionality here. I'm not going to run through that in too much detail, but you can see here we do have a range of different functions that is visible. Now, once we're looking at the point of sale, we can start our transaction. Now, in this instance, I'm going to click on my big button on the left. And I'm going to be asked for my password. And this is so that we know who it is that's going to start the transaction. And so we know which controls levels to give that person. This is particularly important for auditability purposes. Once we've got that transaction started, it's really important um, that we, we can see that we've got our receipt number or docket number at the top. And in this instance, we've even got a salesperson linked to the operator. Now, I've got my transaction here. You can see our screen has changed. And down the bottom, it no longer says start sale. It says finalize and void entry. Now, there's a few ways we can add a transaction, add an item to our transaction. We can use a fast key. So these fast keys have our functions linked to them, uh, anything within our static keys. So for example, if we add a pen, we can see our item has come up here. We can type in a barcode. That would be just like scanning a barcode if we had a barcode scanner. In this instance, we can see that barcode actually matches two different items. So I can choose Diet Coke or regular Coke. Otherwise, we can use our item lookup. To search for any other items. Now you can see this is a live search. So as we type an extra letter, it re will remove the shipment. 
and just show our Shiraz. There's really, ex um, really great functionality we can see. We've got our extra information here. So we can see the default price for the item. The item does allow a price override and allow a discount. In this instance, we don't have a serial or a lot item, or we would have that information visible. And because it's a bottle of wine, we even see our item units where we see our case, crate, dozen, and each with the conversions of each. And we know a dozen bottles of wine is 12. And then on the right-hand side of the screen, we can see our stock on hand at other locations as well. So in this instance, we've got negative inventory because we've sold so much of it. But if you do have negative inventory turned off in Sage, we can allow the transaction at pause or disallow that with a warning. So it's um, that option is up to you. Now, if we look at our item prices, we can see here, we've got our quantity breaks where we buy one is 56. But then if we buy 12, we get a two and a half percent discount or five or seven, seven and a half. And against this item, we, we can see we don't have an image here. But if we look at the other item we've got here, we can see we've got an image visible here. We can even have multiple images visible. Really good if you've got a product that has different images from different angles, such as like a, a car, you can see those different angles. Now, as we add that item to the sale, we can enter a different quantity or select a different unit. So we might have a full dozen. And then once we press select, it's going to add that item to the transaction. So there's our two dozen. Now, for now, we can select our payment. So it's really easy to do a split payment. So in this instance, we might choose debit. Take say $500 on debit. And then the rest we might enter as cash. So we can use our fast keys for this. We even have multi-currency available. So in this instance, I'm gonna swap that over to CAD and it's done the conversion for us. We do have a currency converter available as well. And okay. Now, as we can see here, we've got our two amounts here and no change to be issued. And our finalized button has now lit up because it knows this transaction is fully paid. And as we press finalize, we can also ask for extra statistics. So things such as uh, your local postcode, um, if you want that sort of information, you can, or zip code, you can capture that, which may be useful for marketing purposes. And we've got our receipt printed here. Now these documents are really easy to change. Um, we have used Report Builder and at the top of the screen, and at the bottom, this is free text that's really easy to change and um, prints differently at each location. So you can see here, we've got the location information here and we may have our opening hours visible here. And we've even got a, a barcode here for the receipt number. So if a customer comes in wanting a refund, you can scan the barcode really to really, really easily select that. And there's our transaction. In addition, we also view our customers. So as you look at our customers, I'm just going to select our Ronald Black. We can see the address, any uh, UDF or uh, optional fields we might have linked to the customer. We can view that information. 
as well as any customer notes and their account balance. And so we can see here, we've got both InfoPos and non-InfoPos invoices. So these non-InfoPos invoices have been posted in Sage and we can actually take a payment against them. So this is really useful. So we're talking back to that omni-channel experience where the customer may have take, made an order over the phone or on the website, but then they've come in here, they've walked in said, hey, I wanna pay my last invoice that comes up. I can look up the customer, click payment, rather than an, I could either take a generic amount against the customer or select specific transactions. Now we can see all of our invoices that are available to be paid. And we can click on our select to pay button. I'm just gonna return back to our customer. And we can also see the calculation for their current available credit. We can see their history of transactions as well as the monthly totals to see roughly how much they spend per month and come out to they come in. Any reward points or loyalty points that they've earned, which is really helpful if you know they ask why their 4,000 loyalty points from 2019 are no longer available, it's because they've expired. You can also see um, which price list they've got linked. In this case, they've got the CBAVG with a C discount against them. They don't have any specific customer contract pricing, as well as any quotes or sales orders they have linked to their customer as well. You can also add them to any subscriptions that we may want to ex export and open deliveries that they might have. And with our gift cards function, we can also link a gift card to a customer as well. You can see this isn't working right now, but um, really easy to view the gift cards that they do have. And we can allow or disallow any customer edits as well. So you may want to allow your operators to change customer details because they say, you know, I've changed my address, I no longer live here, or we can stop that from being allowed. Because you may want your accounts receivable to be responsible for those. Now, as we look at that, uh, we can see all of our transactions that have been flowing up to Sage. And now at the end of the day, all of that money would have been posted to our clearing bank. And from a financials perspective, we don't know what amounts have been received because they could have been, they could have been mixed in this, in the case that we saw the amounts were mixed between cash and debit and even US and Canadian. And what we want to do is complete a cash count here. So we can enter our, we would count the money that's available in the till. I'm just going to put some approximates in here. That's next. Print our cash count dockets. We can see here we've got some pretty big variances. So I'm just going to adjust those to be somewhat close. You can see here now we've got a difference of 88 cents between our expected and counted. We can hide the expected if needed. In this instance, you can also see that the other amounts of the FTPOS or debit and MasterCard and Visa, these amounts are all auto counted. That's because we've got this credit card integration active and we know how much was received. And as we press next, we can see our full variance here at 339 and our float out. 
And sometimes the float may vary. So we do um, actually make any changes to the float variance account as required. I'm going to close my shift and we can see we've confirmed the amounts and the variances are linked per payment amount too. And there's our receipt. At the start of the day, we can make that cash count also mandatory. But we've started a new shift and now we're up to a new day. Okay, now I think that's all we had for today. Um, I'm just going to jump across back to our presentation. Uh, do we have any questions for today? Thanks, Nick. So yes, at this time, we'll open up the chat option for questions. Uh, there were a few uh, questions that came in while you're talking, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the first one was, uh, how often do tra transactions get to Sage? Perfect. Thanks for the question. Uh, they are uploaded in real time, so they're always uploading in the background. We use uh, Windows services to handle that process, and they're uploaded through the Sage 300 com API. So they're honoring all of the configuration you have within Sage. Perfect. Um, another one that came in, it says, uh, is InfoPass integrated to Sage CRM? Uh, it is not directly, but it's uploading any customer changes through to Sage 300. Uh, your Sage 300 and CRM connection is honored. So any changes we, we receive any changes made there and we make any changes that are uploaded to CRM. Thanks, Nick. Um, I'm gonna give it a few more seconds, see if any other questions come in. Um, if not, we'll go ahead and wrap up early, but yeah, we'll give it about 10 more seconds. Perfect. So it looks like we had one more that just came in. It said, uh, can we change the appearance on the screen? Uh, for example, if we want a red color, can we change it um, if my coworker wants green? Oh, you saw a mute, Nick. <laughs> Absolutely, really easy to change. We can see here, I've got a black point of sale at the moment. And if I just open myself back up, and as we up, open up another tool, this could be at another location. You can see this one has a green background and even has a different set of fast keys. So it's really easy to view that and make any changes. And we even teach you how to uh, change these fast keys for your convenience. Perfect. Um, I think that's all the questions that we have for today. So if you guys do have any additional questions, uh, you can always reach out to us by calling 407-965-2411, or you can email acumen at am at acumenfl.com. Um, our next webinar will be on Wednesday, September 15th uh, with Zap, and they'll be going over Sage data and analytics. So please be on the lookout for future uh, email invitations on that. Um, I believe so. I believe that's all we have for today. So thank you, Nick and InfoPass for the great presentation. And we look forward to seeing you guys on our next webinar Wednesday.